to our channel. My name is Alice. Last time we were looking at stocks and shares and simplifying what those things mean in the big world of stock markets. Today on a similar theme we're going to be looking at index or indices. And first off, what is an index? So an index is defined either by what it is or what it does. Now a common analogy is that it's a basket of stocks but that doesn't really tell us much. Basically, what it does is it tells people how well a stock market is performing. Now, even if you've never traded before, it's likely you will have heard of some indices before. Names like Dow Jones, Standard & Poor's, Nikkei and FTSE feature in the news almost every day. Now, each index contains a number of stocks, hence the basket analogy. FTSE 100. Now this contains stocks of the 100 largest companies quoted on the London Stock Exchange. There's also the FTSE 250. So these are companies that are listed on the FTSE 350 but are not quite large enough to make it to the top 100 or FTSE 100. Now the FTSE 250 is generally considered a better indicator of the UK's economic performance and that's because a smaller proportion of the companies listed on the FTSE 250 are international. There's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that is a list of the 30 largest US companies. Now, the word industrial here is a bit of a red herring as the index contains stocks from things like Microsoft and Walt Disney, and we know that's nothing to do with anything heavy or industrial. Standard and Poor's 500, or S&P 500, that contains stocks of the 500 largest US companies. The NASDAQ 100, that contains stocks of the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Now, NASDAQ has generally attracted technology stocks, so the index has become a bit of a proxy for technology companies. Now, it feels like the FTSE 100 has been around for a very long time, but it only started life in 1984 with a value of 1,000. The FTSE 100 is only a tiny baby in comparison to the granddaddy of indices that is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now that began life way back in 1896 and was founded by Charles Dow who was the then editor of the Wall Street Journal. And he used it to develop his nascent ideas in technical analysis. The amount an index rises or falls each day depends on what happens to its constituent stocks. So for example, if an index starts with a value of 100 and throughout the day its stocks on average rise by 2%, then the index value at the close of play by that day will be 102. And just a little note here, every number needs a unit. So share price changes are measured in cents and pennies, currency changes are measured in cents and pips, and indices are measured in points. Hence the phrase, the FTSE rose by 30 points yesterday, making a bit more sense. Most indices, including the FTSE 100, S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, use a market cap weighted average calculation, which means they're more heavily affected by large market cap stocks than by smaller ones. However, a few, including the Dow Jones 30, don't use this method. Now, the Dow is an exception to this as it uses a price weighed average. So the value of the Dow is calculated by adding up the value of all its constituent stocks and dividing by the number of stocks in the index. Now the effect of this is that the more expensive the share price, a bigger a role it's going to play in affecting how an index behaves. And because of this, the index does not necessarily reflect the underlying market value of the companies. For example, a company which issues out more shares may be more valuable as a whole, but its share price may be lower than a smaller company that issues out fewer shares. So price weighted stock market indices were relevant 80 years ago. They're of pretty limited value in terms of indicating how an economy is faring. And the USA primary index, the S&P 500, is a market cap weighted, not price weighted index. You'll only hear things like the Dow Jones when you glance at things like the CNBC. So why does the media report the Dow Jones? Well, simply because it's been around for so long. So traditionally, for over 100 years, the Dow Jones served as an indicator of the general well-being of America's most major industries. 
Now it serves as an average of the price of 30 large companies and average market movements better than tracking one stock would. And as such, it's one of the several indices that's generally quoted in the business segment of the news, such as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. So when someone says the market has risen or fallen by 50 points, what that generally means is they're referring to the Dow Jones Industrial Average and how much that has risen or fallen in a day. Simple. So the Russell 2000 Index, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, these indices are all used as benchmarks for investment performance. So for example, it would be unrealistic to expect ABC stocks to greatly outperform the index they are a part of. So the S&P 500 Index, that represents those larger USA-based company stock, while the Russell 2000 represents the smaller quoted stock USA companies. Now, if your portfolio was primarily composed of larger USA company stock, then it would be appropriate to compare the performance of your portfolio with the performance of the S&P 500. Similarly, if you own small company stock, then you could compare the overall performance of your portfolio to the Russell 2000. Now, because the S&P 500 is composed of such large companies, it also serves as a good representative of the overall well-being of the USA stock market. So it's good to keep an eye on it. You can't actually buy or sell a stock index because it's a number that represents something about a wider stock market. We can only buy derivatives of a stock index, and that's things like options, futures, CFDs and spread bets. Or you can exchange traded fund which trade like stocks. So for example, for the S&P 500, you can buy SPY. For the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can buy DIA. And for the NASDAQ 100, you can buy QQQ. Now when trading an index, it's always worth noting what that index consists of. But in practical terms, I suppose it is quite hard to keep track of all 100 stocks within the FTSE 100 index. However, there are a couple of things that you should keep an eye on. Firstly, the largest stocks with the largest weighting. And secondly, the sectors that are most heavily represented. That's worth noting that despite the FTSE 100 being London's flagship stock index, 70% of its earnings derive from overseas. So as a result, its relationship with the UK economy is fairly loose. Now there's four sectors that have a weighting of over 10% in the FTSE 100 index, and you can probably guess what some of them are. The first being, surprise, surprise, oil and gas. So think BP and Royal Dutch Shell. Secondly, banks, HSBC, Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds. Thirdly, personal and household goods, so companies like Burberry or Imperial Brands. And lastly, healthcare, so companies such as AstraZeneca and GlaxoSmithKline. Indices are affected predominantly by the performance of the stocks listed on them. So in a sense, the internal and external factors that can affect a share price will in turn affect the wider markets. However, since an index is representative of a certain group of shares, whether it be within a particular country or particular sector, its movement is influenced by what's happening within that country or sector. If, for example, the technology industry is booming while the financial sector is struggling, then the indices that are more heavily weighted in technology stocks may perform better. Similarly, if there is economic problems in the USA, then those indices may perform much worse than in a country where the economic situation is better. Of course, there's no exact science and indices can be affected by hype, rumour, speculation, investor confidence, as well as global events such as terrorist attacks, political instability and conflict. So that's everything we've got for you about indices. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. <laughs>